Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is talking about MailSpring, a wonderful email client available for Linux, and better yet, it is recently 100% free and open source. First things first, I would like to give credit to Derek Taylor over at DistroTube for bringing this to my attention with his video. So if you'd like to check that out, there will be a link in the description. So like I said, this application is completely free and open source. Right here I have their GitHub page open and MailSpring Sync was the portion of the application that was not free and open source. But if we go down here to their license, you see that 21 days ago there was an update in preparation for their full switch to the GNU general public license. And if we go to their main GitHub page for the entire project, it has already been under the GNU public license here. Free and open source software, it is beautiful. And for free and open source software, you don't really get much better than this right here. It is extremely elegant, it's modern, and it has features that actually makes me excited to use it. Before using this application, I would either just use email applications on my phone. For my actual um, Tech Hut email account, I was using Geary, and I only used that because I had to, because all the other ones are even worse than Geary. It's the, and they, none of them really look good. This, on the other hand, is completely modern. It actually... Like I said, it has features. My favorite thing is the read receipts. It has a native read receipt functionality. So it's kind of like you send somebody a message on some instant messenger and it says if they've seen the message. This little eye right here is an example of that. If I click on that, you can see when they've read your messages. Uh, this is an example right here of an actual email. Well, basically the layout you have, it's kind of what you would expect out of a mail client. You have all your folders and everything here. You have all your mail right here. This is my actual Tech Hut email. I kind of went through and made sure there was nothing too crazy. Uh, it's mostly just companies trying to get me to push products, but most of these end up not going anywhere because I'm too uh, picky or I say, if I'm gonna review something, it's gonna be completely fair honest. And if it sucks, I'm gonna say that and then they don't reply. So that's often what happens there. Um, but this is really cool. So one of the features that's really nice is if you go down here, um, if I re-click on this, actually let's go to this one. So when you have an email, you have the option to write a reply. You just click right here and it opens up uh, the reply right here. And you can uh, make it bigger, you can make it smaller, and you have all the general functionalities. It's basically a rich text editor. Uh, one thing I really like, and it gives you these little tips to track links in emails, so one of the features is you can actually track links that you send to people to see if they have actually clicked on it. So that's really nice if you want to really make sure somebody is opening what you sent them, as well as the read receipts. That is really, really handy. So then you're just not sitting around waiting, wondering if somebody opened an email. So if somebody opens it and they don't reply, then at least you know, hey, they're not probably not going to reply. But this is really nice too because right here you have the uh, option to set reminders. So you can remind me if uh, no one replies in a couple weeks, a couple days, if it's something that's super important and you need to like push it more. So I've used this a couple times and you have everything else you'd expect too, such as adding uh, att attaching files. You can translate bodies of email within here, which uh, for example, this company wanted to send me a uh, like a computer chair or something and um, like sorry it's warehouse's fault but you see MailSpring has translated this message into English if I hit show original that's the Spanish translation so that's super super cool oh Dizzy come here right here oh who's a good girl Dizzy Dizzy oh Dizzy but moving on if we go over here we have a little sidebar that uh, is kind of contact information I'll go back to one of the MailSpring emails because they actually have some more information here. You see MailSpring team. So you could have contacts and save those and make it look pretty good if you contact the same people frequently, whether that be through work or some sort of organization. And you could also see all the emails they sent you. So MailSpring was uh, periodically sending emails with different features and stuff, which generally I'd consider that spammy, but I actually liked it because I did learn a lot poking through their emails. So this goes through some of the read receipts and the click notifications. Uh, there's theming. So if you go under edit preferences 
and we can go over here to appearance. We have options for single panel, two panel. We could change the theme, and there are a couple different options here, such as dark, uh, dark side, Ubuntu. And um, like I said, Derek Taylor was the one that kind of brought this to attention with his video. He made his own theme that you could actually import, and he did it for a uh, to kind of match his terminal quant and all that. So I thought that was super, super cool. But for example, let's say I wanted to go with the dark theme, close this out, and now I have the dark theme selected. That's not my preference. I'm kind of really liking the lighter theme, so I just go to, actually there's a quick way to change the theme there. Uh, let's go with dark side and then close this out. Yeah, see that looks pretty good. It's a little better. It matches my actual theme a little bit more here. But if I go back under edit and preferences, you can see a lot more of the stuff I have going on. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, at the moment, you do have to sign in with a MailSpring account. So you need to create an account, sign in. They don't store your emails or anything like that. And uh, soon, part of their transition to being completely free and open source, you are going to be able to have that as an option in the future. I did notice in the Archie's repository, somebody forked it already and uh, made it so it doesn't rely on their central servers and you don't really have to do that. It's under the Archie's repository as MailSpring-Libre. But for me, this, this is fine. I don't mind signing into a MailSpring account. Uh, but over here, you have subscription options. You have your account. So this is my Brandon at TechCut.TV. You can email that if you need to. If you need to contact me for anything, I'm pretty quick. Um, if it's like a tech support thing, I might not reply because I have a lot going on. Um, there's general, so you have a bunch of different general settings here, so you can really customize how everything's laid out. You have a bunch of different keyboard shortcuts, so if you are somebody who heavily uses the keyboard, such as if you're into window managers, things like that, you're going to really, really work really quick if you learn all these keyboard shortcuts. And they're, right now I have them synced up to Gmail because I kind of use them a little bit, but you can match them up with Apple Mail, Inbox by Gmail, or Outlook if you're already familiar with those various platforms. You have mail rules here, create a new rule. This is just kind, kind of like on the video I went over that uh, the Fluent Reader RSS client. You could set certain rules for certain instances, but I'm not going to get too far into that right now. Under folders, you have basic folder settings. That's pretty self-explanatory. Signatures, I actually didn't edit this yet, which I will go ahead and do. But here you can change what's on the bottom of the email and how it looks. So I'm going to be getting into that after this video. Uh, templates, you could set up templates so if you send the same thing a lot or you just want to have things ready to go, that is also an option for you. Another thing that's really handy is the snooze button right here. I often use this if I'm like about to record a video. I do later today and then it will snooze the video. I gotta remember to blur this out because that's my address. Uh, USPS inform delivery. So let's go back up to MailSpring. Um, yeah, that, that's really all I'm going to really get into with this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, right here under view activity, you can see uh, various things that have been opened using their trackers and stuff like that. So you see I have a, uh, uh, he read or replied to an email from uh, private internet access. I uh, had a Bitwarden support thing and I can see that they opened it. It's, it's just really cool overall and I'm really, really happy that this there's such a good email client in Linux now because it's just one of those things that I've never really been too excited about, I've never been interested in because they all are, none of them are really featureful like this. They do all have a lot of features but none of them present their features in such a manner that it actually makes you excited to use it. And because of a lot of the features of this and the fact it's free and open source, I've actually removed a lot of my emails from my phone and put them on here just because if I send something I want these tracking features and I want to be do it in this interface. And it's helped a lot because it's cut back on a lot of notifications my phone gets so that's really nice too. But that's kind of unrelated. Um, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys mean the world to me. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there will be a link in the description. If not, liking this video, uh, subscribing if you're not currently subscribed, and leaving a comment telling me what email client you currently lo lose, what email client you currently use, if you use or th are thinking about switching to MailSpring, or if maybe you just host your own web-based client on your own server or you do it through Nextcloud, 
whatever, let me know down below. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Links to get this will be in the description as well as to Derek's video. Um, goodbye.